is from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 17, if I can get this to work. All right. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect un unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for today. I give you thanks for the opportunity to be here and to share your message. And Lord, I ask now that either because of me or in spite of me, that you bring a message to your people. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So if I sway back and forth a little bit, it's because I'm still trying to get my land legs back. And I still feel like I'm on the ship and I've got to rock back and forth a little bit. But uh, it was wonderful being away and being able to be on a cruise. I love the water and being on the water all the time. Uh, but it's a special blessing to be back here uh, with all of you today. Thanks for the prayers and, and thoughts over this past week. Um, but I had a question for you. If you had to pick your favorite fast food restaurant to go to, which one would it be? Fast food, that's, that's a step up from fast food. I guess it is Chick-fil-A, I'm hearing Chick-fil-A. Arby's, okay. So for me, I'll have to go with Chick-fil-A. I really like it. Um, and it's not so much the food. For me, it's the customer service side of things because you know every time you go to Chick-fil-A and you say the words, thank you, you're going to hear, my pleasure, very good, excellent. So it's this back and forth of being able to say thank you and yes. And I've had youth that work at Chick-fil-A and it's fun to play with them a little bit and say thank you and they automatically, the response comes back, my pleasure. Uh, but it's, it's getting that sense that thankfulness is appreciated, that thankfulness is something uh, that can be shared and returned as well. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more today. Um, can you believe that Thanksgiving is coming up shortly? I mean, in fact, my alarm clock, the channel that it's been on for music for waking me up has actually switched over to Christmas music. And I, I can't believe that either, but it's happening. I mean, this, the holiday season is quickly upon us. Um, and Thanksgiving truly uh, is probably one of my favorite holidays. And no, it's not just for the food, though the food is really good, um, but it's a, a day in which we can gather with family and share the things that we are truly thankful for. It is one of my absolute favorite times, um, but at the same time, unfortunately with my family, uh, trying to get across the idea of giving thanks and remembering what we have to be thankful for. Um, we had our whole family at our house one year for Thanksgiving, and I thought, yes, a great opportunity. I could share with them the whole story of Thanksgiving. I can let them know and give them the opportunity to say what they're thankful for. So I'm going through, and I'm talking about George Washington and his appeal for Thanksgiving, and 
um, and Abraham Lincoln and his appeal for Thanksgiving. And then I say, and what are you all thankful for? And was literally told, can you just get to the point so we can eat? <laughs> you know, it's like, we're just ready to eat here. Um, but, you know, so maybe they don't get it, but in my heart, I get it. And we share, Pam and I share it with our kids and talk about what we're thankful for. But just to be able to sit around together with your family and recognize all that there is to be thankful for, to share a meal uh, together, to celebrate that time, but also to be taking stock of the things that we are thankful for in our lives um, so that we know how to live out our life through that thanks. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. So today, what I'd like to do this morning is dive into the concept of thanks. More specifically, why and how we give thanks. Did you know that the word thank appears 133 times in the Bible? Did you know that? Good trivia question. Use that at Thanksgiving. Uh, it's 61 times in the Hebrew Bible and 72 times in the New Testament. The definition for the word thanks is to express gratitude, appreciation, or acknowledgement. What are some common ways that you use the word thanks? Anybody ever use that word? Or only at Chick-fil-A? OK. How do you use the word thanks? When someone gives you something, OK, thanks. Every email you send, thanks. Yeah, not just a K, which I learned from the youth recently. If you get a response back that's just a K, that's kind of insulting. I didn't know that. Did you know that? K. Don't send K. It's got to be a little bit more than that. But thanks, something that you might get from an email response or a text response. How else do you use thanks? Do you say thank you? Do you say you're thankful? Do you give thanks? <laughs> There's many ways that we use this. As I was thinking about this word, this concept over the course of the week, and praying about and discerning um, what this would mean, for some reason, the entire concept of the idea of giving thanks really stood out boldly to me. The idea that thanks is something that you can actually give. You know, how often do we say things and we never actually think about what we're, what we're saying or why those words are put together? But have you ever thought of the concept of thanks as being something that you can actually give to someone else? We use Thanksgiving and we think of turkey and football and everything else, but what would it look like if we understood thanks as something that we could give to someone else? And what would that be like? So today I want to be able to think about what does that mean to be able to give thanks? What does it look like to be able to give thanks? And why do we do it? Why do we do it? From Psalm 100 that we heard this morning, thank you, Rob, for sharing that. It says, for the Lord is good, and God's love endures forever. For the Lord is good, and God's love endures forever, as a reason for why we give thanks. God is good, therefore we give thanks. We give thanks to God, we give thanks to others. So where does it go from there? To give thanks... I think, in thinking about this, you have to be thankful. You ever thought about those words? Thankful, as opposed to thank empty? Does that make sense? So you don't want to be thank empty, you want to be thankful, but in order to be thankful, you have to understand what you're thankful for. And I thought about these things, I thought about some of the things that I am thankful for. I'm thankful for my family, for my wife, for my kids, for my whole family. I'm thankful for having a roof over my head and food on the table. I'm thankful for 
being able to be a ministry that God has called and used me to care for others and to share God's love and God's word with others. I'm thankful for so many things. And as I was going through this in my head, I kept hearing Julie Andrews, and these are a few of my favorite things. Uh, but I didn't want to, I was so worried this morning I was going to break into song as I was going through all the things that I'm thankful for. But what are some of the things that you are thankful for? Have you ever taken a moment to take inventory and take stock of what you are thankful for? I know some of you have because I follow you on Facebook or social media and how many of you are doing the November thanks every day thing where you put down what you're thankful for every day? Come on, I know some of you are. Put your hand up. <laughs> Who's got that? So some people on Facebook or other social media choose in November to write down each day one thing that they are thankful for. I think in taking the time to take stock of what we are thankful for, we become full of thanks. And when we are full of thanks, we have the opportunity to give that thanks away. However, I know that there are times in our lives where it is not easy to be thankful. I know that as we approach Thanksgiving, there may be empty seats around the table voices that are not heard, uh, presence that is not, not there with us, or there may be illness or other issues of loss or rejection that may be going on that make it very difficult for us to feel thankful, to feel as though we are full of thanks. In these times, I think it's very important that we draw closer to God, that we have to give thanks for who God is and not what God does or does not do. We have to allow ourselves to realize that there is hope and there is comfort and there is grace in the midst of what life sometimes throws at us and we find that in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We find that in the knowledge that God loves us, that God created us, that God walks with us. We offer to God our love and thanks for the sake of who God is and what God has done for us and all of creation. That's agape love, love for the sake of, not because of what you've received or gotten or anything else. It's love for the sake of. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the Apostle Paul writes, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's God's will that we be full of thanks. It's God's will that we offer thanks. It's God's will that we give thanks. It's who we are. It's what Jesus has taught us to do. In Psalm 100, as we heard from today, um, it says, Give thanks to God and praise God's name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. God's faithfulness continues through all generations. Give thanks to God and praise God's name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever when we have those times where we're experiencing difficulty of feeling thankful, we remember that God's love is always there for us, that God's love endures forever. And we, when we really take that in and understand that no matter what, God is with us, God walks beside us, God fills us, God surrounds us, God's love for us endures forever, it can give us that thankfulness that we need to be able to give thanks. I always love to share a little history with Thanksgiving. It's just who I am. Having been a history major, I can't help myself. But I was looking back at the first Thanksgiving um, in 1621 with the, the pilgrims. And they're giving thanks. And I have absolutely no idea why or how. We we're talking about having those times that we don't feel thankful. We had over a hundred, little over a hundred pilgrims come, and over the course of those two winters, they lost over half of their people. 
They planted three crops. The only one that worked was the Indian corn, and they were little tiny ears of corn. It wasn't like big corn, but their barley failed, and the other crop that they planted failed too. So all they had was a little bit of corn to give thanks for. What is there to give thanks? Over half of their people are gone. Their crops have failed. But their Native American friends, concerned for their health, <laughs> brought food brought a bountiful feast uh, to share. Um, what an amazing thing that was. But they were going to gather and they were going to give thanks for this harvest, however meager it was, because they saw it as a necessary thing to do. They chose to offer thanks for and especially to God. They had great faith and trusted in God. They chose to be thankful rather than thanks empty in that moment because they felt that it was necessary to give thanks for what they did have, for the people that did not, that they did not lose, for the uh, friendships that they did have because they recognized that what they did have did come from God. A favorite quote of mine by a president about Thanksgiving is from uh, John F. Kennedy. And he said this in 1963. He said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live them out. Do you hear that? We must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. But to live by them. In that quote by President Kennedy, I hear our main idea for this morning. We live out gratitude by choosing to give thanks. Offering and giving to others out of the gratitude we have for the things we are thankful for. The ways we give thanks is by purposefully living it out. The way we treat others, the way we care for others, we actually give thanks. We meet other people where they are. We choose to offer out of the thankfulness that we have. We choose to recognize that we have been given so much that we can offer back to others, that we can share that kindness, that grace, that peace, and that love. Other ways that we give thanks are giving to the church, being charitable, giving to others so that they can have the things necessary for the missions that they do, for the things that they do, so that others can be cared for in the midst. We give thanks when we mentor or care for another just because. When we come alongside of someone else and we encourage them and watch them grow and support them in the midst of it. I mean, we heard already today from Abigail sharing about the missions that she's done, but how did she get to the point where she's a missionary? She got there out of the love and the prayer and the support that she received from her family, her Sunday school teachers, her pastors, her youth leaders, her church family that cared for her. She got there out of the thanks that you gave, that you extended to her that you cared for her, gave her the ability to listen and hear God's call for the directions in which she would go. We give thanks when we worship with grateful hearts for all that God has done for us. We give thanks to God each day, remembering that it is necessary and an important thing to let God know how thankful we are for all that he has done. Another way we give thanks is serving in missions. And I know I talked to you a bunch about that, but it is such an important thing. This past summer, we got to uh, build a ramp for the Santorelli family. In the act of building the ramp, we were giving thanks for all that we had by giving to people who were in need. They were a beautiful family, a wonderful family, a very loving family, and we fell in love with them as much as I think they fell in love with us. Um, in the act of giving thanks, they returned thanks to us 
wanted to share a letter that we got from the Santorelli family back to our mission team. It says, Dear Reverend Jones, as I write this note, I, rem I am remembering one of the absolutely most beautiful things as your group of volunteers. You, each and every one of you, are amazing and certainly a gift from God. My mother Mary and Father Dominic were simply overwhelmed by the love, the comfort each, of, each one of you provided. You did, not come, uh, into, you did not just come into their home and make it much more beautiful, but also so that they could get around the neighborhood. My mother passed away on September 5th, just 15 minutes after she heard that Dominic uh, got his scooter in his hands. She lingered on for some time and we didn't know the actual diagnosis of, diagnosis of her condition. This was the first day that he hadn't gone to Gilcrest to see her. She went in about a month before she passed. It was her decision as she never lost her amazing mind and recognized each and every one of us until the very end. The best part of her last summer was filled with joy from your church volunteers. Not only did you bring in the best of carpenters emulating Jesus, but every one of them truly showed love and caring for mom. It was totally unbelievable that on her birthday, she was presented with a beautiful blessing from all of you, as well as a cake, balloons, flowers, cards, and she loved seeing the young people getting along and also making it a fun time for themselves. Again, I can't thank you enough for being so kind and generous. We will always remember you in our thoughts and prayers. Blessings, the Santorelli family. We gave thanks in serving. They returned thanks to us for the relationships that were formed, for the love that was shared in the midst of that. They'll always be a part of our hearts and we hope that we will be a part of theirs as well. It's an amazing thing when you give a gift of service when you take out of the thanks that you have and you give it to others, it's an amazing thing and I encourage us all to be a part of that. This giving and receiving of thanks is a way of sharing blessing. The giving and receiving of thanks is a way of sharing blessing. In this past week on our cruise, one day I wore our North Carolina mission shirt and um, many of the crew were from different parts of the country. Um, and one young man named Freddie, working in a shop, uh, came up to us and he was from Zimbabwe. And he saw the cross and flames on my shirt. And he's like, is that your church? And I was like, well, that's where we served on mission, but that's not really my church, it's just where we were. He's like, no, 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 is that your church, as in United Methodist? And I was like, yes, he's like, I don't get to meet many other people that are from my church, the United Methodist Church. And he was so happy to meet someone else that was United Methodist and began talking with us. Um, he's a very active member at his church in Zimbabwe and we talked about Africa University that we've been a part of in our conference supporting and everything else. And uh, I was able to give him a Yarb Cross. So that's one of the things that we do. So now the Yarb Cross is going back to Zimbabwe, which I know it's not alone. There's other ones there now too. Um, but he was thankful for us and we became very thankful for him. We exchanged thanks with one, one another out of the thankfulness that we have. These are all different ways that we give thanks. As Christians, we are called to give thanks. In other words, give back to others all that we have received from God. To give back to others the love, the grace, the, the calling, and everything that God has given to us, we give back to others. What would the world look like if we lived out of that? And I really think that I probably could have just read the passage from Colossians today and given you everything you knew about everything you needed to know about giving thanks. So I'd like to close with that again. And I want you to listen to the words of what, God, what is being shared in scripture for how we live out thanks and how we give thanks. And it says, therefore, as God's chosen people, that's all of you, that's all of us, holy and dearly loved, loved people of God, 
Clothe yourselves with compassion. Care for others. Care for the world. Care for the needs of others. Clothe yourselves with kindness. What would, be, what would it be like just to smile at other people, to show love to them in various ways? So clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility. Don't think too much of who you are, but who God is through you. Gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. The men, uh, men's ministry one time talked about iron sharpening iron, how we work with each other, we encourage, we teach, we admonish one another to be better versions of ourselves. And where do we get the wisdom to do this? From psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in our hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Give thanks, folks. Remember what you are thankful for and that you don't, you don't have to be thank empty. Be thankful and give that thanks away. Amen.